because honestly this may be the last video dedicated to the Jeep Gladiator. What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to continue working on our 2020 Jeep Gladiator Rubicon. And as you know, this sucker has come a long ways from being completely smashed in the side to transforming into an absolute beast. But we still got a good bit to go and we're loving the way that it's turning out so far. And today's video is actually going to be pretty dang exciting because we're going to try to finish this sucker up 100%, which that means we're going to move on to bigger and better projects and even finish up Pop's truck. And that thing is going to be a beast as well. So we can't wait to get back on it. But before we finish up all of our aftermarket parts and our add-ons we still haven't resolved our 4x4 issue and we went through all the wiring harness where it was wrecked and we even took it to the dealership and they're still kind of pointing back to the plug where it was wrecked pretty dang hard and the other day actually while we were driving the tail light was flickering and we went up under there and we messed with that plug and it turned back on so we're pretty dang sure that that's the issue so what we're going to start with is actually removing some of that interior and try to bypass that plug and hopefully get our 4x4 working Dude, I think we might have figured it out, man. This is a huge good sign for us. But what we did was we made it to the plug here. We took it completely apart. But before we started bypassing each individual wire, we decided to pull up a wiring diagram and we color coded the wires just to see where each one leads. And we found the main transfer case wire, the lockers wire, as well as the TPMS wire, all the stuff that's basically not working. And we focused on those wires. We kind of wiggled them around, pushed them back into place. And we put the plug back together. And then within that circuit there and the schematics, it actually showed that a relay could possibly be bad. Yeah, I think it's the transfer case relay or something Exactly, like that. the main transfer case relay or the transfer case module. I think there's a module for the transfer case and it has a relay right here. And we swapped it out with a spare. And believe it or not, everything started working. So let's just hop inside and show you guys what's different now. Let's do it. So I'm gonna fire this thing up. And before, when you put it into four low or four high, it would just keep blinking so it wouldn't engage. But now check this out. Let me grab that from you. So going into four high, blinks, blinks. All right, now going to four low. Blink, oh dude, it goes automatically into four low. It's solid, everything is working. Here you go. Let's go ahead and test out our lockers. That's and, the main thing. Yeah, exactly. And the lockers actually started working. Look at this. Rear axle's locked. It's quick. Used to It used to say, like, uh, lockers canceled. It yeah, used to just it, cancel. It would blink and cancel itself out. But, dude, we got sway. The sway bar works too, right? Dude, everything works. Look at this. Sway bar. Look at this screen here. Sway bar. Tire pressure is still unavailable, which... See, sway bar started working. Dude, that is legit. That so is we can awesome. basically go across some rocks, man. Exactly. As for the TPMS, um, it probably has to just go through its yeah. cycle and then it'll start working. I'll probably read them, but I'm, I think we figured it out. I think it was just all in the relay or it could have been in the plug. So doing all that fixed our problem. Now, like you said, we can go crawling, but before let's go we do ahead that, and put it back together, man. Yeah, let's put it all back together and then we'll do some more mods actually. So the interior is put back together along with a few other trim pieces that we missed before But before we actually jump out of the interior We got a few more finishing touches that we want to do although the interior looks absolutely amazing We basically got the cherry on top right here So we got two boxes here one's made out of wood, which is pretty crazy But the first one we're gonna open up right here is from PowerTech Which I believe this is actually a digital gauge because as you know We installed a supercharger and we don't have a boost gauge and this is what's gonna be our boost gauge, dude, right? Boost gauge plus a bunch of other gauges, dude, dude. You can do a lot of settings on here so we're pretty psyched about this let's go ahead and crack it open and show you guys what we're talking let's about let's do dude. man i mean the interior is perfect right now i gotta say but oh, you know what this is gonna make it even more unique way better so let's go ahead and crack this sucker up. oh dude check that out dang dude so this is called the trinity 2 or something like that I forget yeah. the exact name but it's made by diablo as well dude man. that is sick look at that boost gauge dude rpms you basically got everything like, on that's here that's all we need the speed and rpm hey, really i wonder don't... if we can do like a big boost gauge right right there dude that'd be sick i'm sure you can do that i so. think so man let's just go ahead crack it open and see if we can throw it in there
All right, so we finally got our Diablo Sport digital gauges installed right there, and it is super clean. I love how it is like a screen on top of a screen. Also got the wires nice and tucked away, and we figured out our boost gauge. So, I mean, it's just plugged into the OBD port, and everything works. There's tons of settings there. We're just going to have to fool around with it. But anyways, we love it how it is. It's perfect. Now let's just go ahead and move on to the wooden box. All right, so before we crack this box open, dude, just check out what it came oh in, dude. This goodness. is made out of some mahogany wood or something, that's like man. Some, that's like a furniture box. It looks like a dang time capsule. Hey, or we might even use these for anything else that we need. You know what I mean? Like parts or anything, dude. These nice are legit. Nice little storage container. Kind of scratched it up a little bit because I didn't know how fancy it was. Look at that A to Z auto wheel, dude. That is legit, man. I'm just, I'm excited about the box. I forgot that there's something in here, dude. Dude, let's crack open what's inside. Are and you see ready, it, man. dude? I am ready. All right, looks like it just pops right up oh what is this some sort of letter written in some sort of foreign language here what is this i don't even know how to read that can you read that i have no idea may have to might have to screenshot that and take it to somebody what is what is what, what the is, heck is this? this dude Dude, check out this plane. Uh, this, is this a plate right here? I don't know. It's like a beautiful painting, though. What does that say, man? Dude, I don't <laughs> even know, but that is legit. It looks all handmade, like the box itself, man. Yeah, what? so definitely you can follow these guys on Instagram. They do some awesome work. It's called AZA Auto Wheel. Hey, not only the, uh, not only wheel, dude. Check this out, dude. It is legit. Man, that's just some beautiful art, man. That is, that is it. awesome. I don't know what this is, but I feel like I'm just gonna hit you in the head dude, with this like one Dude, that's like a weapon day. right there. <laughs> <laughs> you might have to, man. This looks like some sort of weapon, but let's go ahead and see what's under there, man. Let's do it. All right, so what we have here is a custom steering wheel for our Jeep, and we worked with AZA Auto before on our S2000, and that steering wheel is super sick. But dude, I can't wait to see what this one looks like, man. Custom made, I honestly don't know. What, they do all sorts of stuff. They do carbon fiber. Uh, dry carbon. Dry carbon. They do that carbon. Is that dry carbon, that carbon flake, whatever? Dude, it looks so sick. It's like cut up carbon and that's a six steering wheel or they could do like some custom leather they can do basically anything you just let them know what kind of steering wheel you want and they'll do hook you up turn Dang, it Dang, check oh, that out oh my goodness dude do you see the detail in it are you kidding me dude that is are sick. you kidding me Goose man one. dude this is like a original custom steering wheel dude check out that dude that is legit, man. That is that is as legit as it gets right there. All the buttons are there, so it's just gonna make for an easy installation. What dude, do you say, man? That is awesome, dude. Let's just go ahead, pull the stock one out, and throw this bad boy in. All right, guys, so we just noticed this. This steering wheel is actually for our cop car, which is pretty dang crazy and awesome. But as you can tell, they almost look identical. I mean, they are made by the same manufacturer. But anyways, we do have another box there. Let's go ahead and crack it open and see what our Jeep steering wheel looks like. Dang, guys, check that out, dude. This one's way better than this original one. It almost looks identical, but as you can tell, it has these nice grips on the side. Got that little red stripe right there. And the main thing is it's flat bottom, which is awesome whenever you're driving. It gives you a lot more room, and it just looks super sick. But anyways, dude, this should be a super simple install. Let's go ahead and pop this airbag out, hopefully get the steering wheel off, and swap in our new one. All right, so the brand new steering wheel is finally in, and I gotta say, it looks way better than this one. It's the basic stock steering wheel, and honestly, this one does feel a lot better as well. It's like contoured around the edges right there, nice and grippy, love all the details. But as for the cop car steering wheel, looks super sick as well. I love the carbon, it's gonna look really good in it, but we're probably not gonna install it just yet. We're actually gonna move on to our other aftermarket parts for the Jeep. But before we do that, I want to show you guys some of the chicks that we picked up the other day and maybe a couple ducks as well. Come check this out. It's actually the parents picked it up. 
and they're, I guess we're just gonna raise them up on the channel. They're super cute. We got two ducks in there and I think 10 chicks. I don't know which ones are roosters, which ones are chickens. I guess we're just gonna let them grow up and we'll find out later, but you're definitely gonna get, uh, get updated on these. But anyways, let's go ahead and show you guys what else we got for the Jeep. All right, so what you just seen us unbox is actually an aftermarket custom front drive shaft. The sucker right here is made by Adams, and huge shout out to Reckless Off-Road for actually hooking us up with this because we really needed it. Our stock drive shaft was actually already flexing, over flexing pretty much, especially with our coil over conversion, you get the ultimate flex. So we definitely needed this to kind of increase that angle. And check this out, we got a double CV joint right here, which is gonna give us plenty of flex or plenty of angle, if you will, as well as over here. And it does extend, which is awesome, and it's all greasable. And also on the transfer case side, we do got uh, an adapter right here. And I think it may be a little bit stronger as well. So let's just go ahead and remove the stock one and try to install this one right here. All right guys, so check this out. We got the new drive shaft installed and this is our old one right here. As you can tell, only has one CV joint on one side and the other one is just some kind of rubber joint. And as you can tell, it is bent right here from just over flexing. So this one is just complete trash. Won't handle the aftermarket uh, suspension on this thing. But right now what we're gonna do is actually test out our drive shaft and go flex on that little hill that we have right there and see how everything works. We're gonna disconnect the sway bar and all that good stuff and just see how well it flexes. All right, so I'm gonna need you to take it real easy because i think i already see a problem area really yeah our sway bars are already pointed upwards at an angle and they should be flat so if we flex even like about three inches it may cut into that right there it may actually hit our inner fender so i the need you to go sway bar, really? yeah really? they're too long i think so we may even have to trim them up and modify them so go ahead and disconnect the sway bar i'm gonna put a four low first keep going keep going a little bit more, you're good. Keep going. Dang, so she's flexing all the way out. Dang, yeah, actually, we may not have to trim them up, but let me walk around and see. How, see. Much, how much flex do I got? Dang, dude. We still got plenty of flex. Let me actually look at that, that axle right quick. Oh, yeah, look at the drive shaft. Or the drive shaft, not the axle. Good. Can't really see it, but go on that side seems to be good dang dude dude this thing is nasty man yeah you can go all the way you can go all the way come on that's it i mean you're not gonna flex any more than that i think you reached the peak of the hill but dude there's like about a foot and a half of flex here and let me look at that drive shaft from over here actually We're good, dude. Woo! Woo! This thing is quick for a Jeep, man. That is plenty of power, but as you can tell, we're running, what, about six pounds of boost? Yeah, right up, right up around there. Which is actually plenty for a stock engine, you know what I mean? And it's giving a bunch of power to this thing. I'm sure you can get a lot more power, like if you had like a dyno or something like that. But for right now, dude, we are happy with it. This thing drives super smooth and everything like that, dude. All right, so we are back. We did a little bit of ripping, a little bit of testing, and some flexing, everything in between. I gotta say, this thing is an absolute animal. And we did get a lot of work done today, but it did get a little late on us. So we're just gonna continue tomorrow in the morning. All right, guys, so it is the next day. And we're just gonna go ahead and continue working on our Jeep. 
And as you know, we actually removed the bed rack off the back of this thing just to see what this thing looks like in truck form. And it does look pretty dang sweet, but you can't forget we are going with the Overlander look. That way, if you decide to go camping for the weekend or if you want to live off the back of this thing, this is going to make it possible right here, especially with all the cool attachments we got for this thing. This thing is going to fit right in. So let's just go ahead, turn this Jeep around, throw this sucker back on and start installing some attachments. All right, so check out our very first attachment. It's actually a slide out table and we did install the brackets because when you fold this table up, it goes right into there. You have this sucker with you anywhere you go and it's just gonna give us plenty of storage space right here. So it's kind of out of the way. And the cool thing about this table is you got a nice little metal extension for when you put your hot grill or your stove, whatever you got here, just any hot foods. This is where you're gonna be eating all that good stuff. Got a couple cup holders and this is just nice to have when you're camping. So we're gonna go ahead and fold this sucker up, put it into its bracket and then we're gonna move on to the next attachment. All right, so we just installed both of our water tanks, and I gotta say that looks really cool right there. We were supposed to actually order one fuel tank as well, which is supposed to be red, and I think that contrasts to look a lot better than just two white tanks here. But anyways, you're definitely gonna need some water out in the wilderness and some fuel as well, so we're gonna order that here really soon. But this side is pretty much filling up and it's complete, so let's just jump onto the other side of this bed rack and see what other attachments we got. All right, so we got our propane tank mounted up there with the bracket. It's a super clean install and it's in the perfect spot. That way, whenever you pull out your propane grill, you can either attach to it or pull it off and have yourself a barbecue in the middle of nowhere. Well, who knows? But anyways, we're actually gonna move on to the next thing. And what we have here is actually some brackets for an ax mount or even a shovel, whatever you want a pickaxe, whatever you want to put on the side of this thing, which is pretty dang cool. And we haven't bought a shovel or ax or any of that. So let's just go ahead and run to the store and see what we can come up with. All right, so we made it here to the Lowe's and we picked out one of the coolest shovels and axes that they have here. We actually went to a few other stores, but dude, check out this nice steel shovel. Dude, that thing has some sick designs on it. Sweet, and it's tempered, stainless steel, don't, won't rust at all. And it's ultimate strength, dude. That's perfect right there. And we got a nice splitting axe. This is not wood, it's all plastic. That way it can just withstand all the weather that it throws at it. But anyways, let's go ahead, head back to the house and install these things. All right, so check that out, guys. We finally got the ax and the shovel mounted, and I gotta say, that looks really cool. The brackets are nice and stout, but that's pretty much all we're gonna add other than the tent. It just didn't arrive in time. We were hoping to throw it on today, but it should be here this afternoon. But you can probably follow us on Instagram, and we'll keep you guys updated. Because honestly, this may be the last video dedicated to the Jeep Gladiator. But you know what? It has come a long way and we're happy with how it turned out. We do got a few more little things that we want to do. Like install these light pods that we'll probably either install in different videos. Or maybe even do like an Instagram Live or something. And also check out this sweet Apex 
power steering cooler right here. So this right here is actually gonna help cool the power steering fluid, which we do have the hydro assist. And actually in the summertime when it gets really hot and you're on trails going really slow, that stuff can actually overheat and it's gonna mess with your steering. So this is definitely gonna help. This is a really nice product by Apex. So you'll probably see us installing this either in another video or actually on Instagram. But anyways, that's pretty much gonna be it for today's video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this Jeep Gladiator build as much as we did. And make sure your post notifications are on so you don't miss out on anything because we got some more awesome things coming your way. And also, huge shout out to everybody who helped make this build possible, especially Pro Charger, BF Goodrich, Reckless Off-Road, Rebel Off-Road, Aaliyah Leather, and Diablo Sport, and anybody else that we might have missed. You guys definitely helped us build one beast of a rig here. But with all that being said, thank you guys for all the love and support. Be sure to drop your comments and thoughts down below and we'll catch you next time. Peace.